Hello and welcome to this lecture on vitamin C and antioxidants. We'll start first when we speak about antioxidants by talking about free radicals. Free radicals are chemically reactive. And the reason why they're sometimes called radical, you can think of them almost as being the bad guys in many cases, is that they steal electrons from their adjacent stable molecules. This results in what's called a new free radical, which in turn sets off a chain of instability. Now your body will naturally work and try to repair your systems and destroy free radicals. But you also get a little bit of help from the foods that you eat. Here we see the link between free radicals and the concept known as oxidation. Oxidation is a bad thing in the overall sense of things. If you have a free radical, it's actively looking around for an electron or an other compound. You can see that there's an unpaired electron in its outer shell, which may, leads it to be unstable. An antioxidant shows up, and I'll show you what nutrients have antioxidant capacity in a second. Those antioxidants are the good guys. They fight against oxidation. They donate an electron to the free radical. After donating that electron, that free radical then becomes stabilized. The antioxidant, on the other hand, is kind of left up the creek because it's missing an electron, electron at which point we say it became oxidized. However, that antioxidant is not as damaging to the other compounds as is an unstable free radical. So the figure caption says that antioxidants stabilize free radicals by donating electrons to them. Free radicals are dangerous to cells because they seek to fill their outer shells by removing electrons from other substances like DNA, proteins, and lipids. Free radicals, for the most part, are said are bad guys. They can be harmful in the sense that they cause the loss of cell membrane integrity and cell collapse. They damage your bad cholesterols, lead to things like plaque and atherosclerosis, which is associated with heart disease. They can alter your DNA and alter protein synthesis. In some cases, a little bit of free radicals can be helpful, though. Your immune system uses them to destroy disease-causing microorganisms. Your white blood cells produce them to destroy things like bacteria, viruses, and fungi. And they might even help prevent cancer in some cases because they help destroy dead cells. Free radicals, for the most part, have been linked to things that we're not happy to have, though. Cancer, heart disease, arthritis and diabetes, emphysema, kidney disease, cataracts, Alzheimer's, and Parkinson's. And there's also environmental factors that increase the formation of these bad guys, the free radicals. Too much sunlight, air and water pollution, radiation, asbestos, ozone, and toxic chemicals can all increase free radical formation. Now, as far as the nutrients that have antioxidant roles, the good guys that help fight against oxidation, these include vitamin A, and in particular the carotenoids, which you'll learn about in this section, vitamin C, vitamin E, selenium, which is a mineral, and then phytochemicals, which are neither vitamins nor minerals, but they're compounds in plant foods that may have health-promoting properties. So vitamin C is an antioxidant. Vitamin C's other name is ascorbic acid. Of the many functions that vitamin C is involved in, collagen synthesis, which is the creation of the, the network of supporting tissue that helps give you good skin and helps to repair wounds, that's promoted by vitamin C. Vitamin C is, again, an antioxidant. And a cool thing about vitamin C is that it helps enhance iron absorption. So if you have, for example, an iron-fortified cereal, like total breakfast cereal, if you have a bowl of that next to an orange or a couple sips of orange juice, the vitamin C in the orange or the orange juice will actually help you absorb more of the iron from that iron-fortified cereal. Same thing if you think about like a steak and a baked potato. Steak has iron, baked potatoes have vitamin C. If you have the vitamin C from the potato along with the iron in the steak, you'll absorb more of the iron from that steak because of the vitamin C. Vitamin C is vital for promoting optimal immune function. Now, lots of people take vitamin C because they think it's going to help prevent against the cold. But we know that people who are deficient in vitamin C are going to be more likely to get the cold. But if you have adequate amounts of vitamin C and then you take more, it doesn't mean you're going to fend off the cold. Vitamin C does not prevent colds, but there is some data indicating that it might help reduce the severity, so how bad the cold that you get is once you get it. Vitamin C is easily destroyed by oxygen, light, heat, and then contact with copper or iron cookware. As an antioxidant, vitamin C is important because it may help reduce the formation of cancer-causing nitrosamines in your stomach. It inhibits the development of botulinum toxin in cured meats, so it's used as a preservative. It helps develop flavor and prevents rancidity. 
So we use antioxidants or use, or you see vitamin C used as an antioxidant in commercial food prep. If you think about those like sliced apples you can get from Trader Joe's or McDonald's, right? They come in a little package and they're already cut up. If you taste them, they're a little bit tangy. And that's because they've had vitamin C sprinkled on them. If you were to just cut up an apple and put it in a bag, because it is exposed to light and air and the oxygen in the air, that apple would turn brown pretty quickly. But when you sprinkle vitamin C on it, the ascorbic acid component, that's what the ingredient list will say, it will say apples and ascorbic acid, that vitamin C helps prevent against oxidation. So that's because vitamin C is an antioxidant and it prevents browning. The vitamin C deficiency disease is called scurvy. Scurvy is caused by reduced collagen synthesis. And one of the things that collagen does is provide a nice network of tissue that helps keep your teeth intact. If that collagen network is compromised, your teeth could end up falling out, which is one of the symptoms of scurvy. Too much vitamin C can be problematic too. It, as I said, for most people it's a good thing because it increases iron absorption, but there's a very rare condition called the iron overload disease. It's called hemochromatosis. And people with hemochromatosis absorb too much iron, so they don't want to have a lot of vitamin C because that makes them absorb more iron. There is an upper limit set for 2,000 milligrams a day. People who go above that on a regular basis may experience GI problems, like inflammation and diarrhea, bloating, um, kind of just feeling bad generally in and around their stomach area. Again, it's not going to kill you. It's a water-soluble vitamin. You'll, you'll pee out a lot of the excess, but in very high quantities, it could cause GI problems. As far as the nutrient needs go, it's 75 milligrams per day for women and 90 for men. An interesting thing about vitamin C is that smokers need an extra 35 milligrams of vitamin C because oxidation of tobacco smoke occurs in the lungs when you smoke cigarettes. The average person in the U.S. takes in about 70 to 100 milligrams a day. The best sources of vitamin C are, as you probably know, citrus fruits, but also other fruits and vegetables like strawberries, green peppers, cauliflower and broccoli, cabbage, papaya, even potatoes are good sources of vitamin C. We usually say the brighter the fruit or the vegetable, the more vitamin C it contains.